So in this video, we will implement the enemy aggro AI. And that means that we'll make it so that when we fire projectile at the enemy, it will become aggravated and it will start chasing us depending on our player's position relative to it. So I'm just going to show you a demonstration of what that looks like and then I'll show you how we code that. And if you if you don't uh, want to write it all out, you can just download the source code um, and watch the video. Okay, so we're going to attack an enemy to get it aggravated. That one's pissed off now. And so we'll just stand over here and see what happens. So it's chasing us. Oh, just fired a projectile. Let's go down here. So that works. We can get more pissed off. Woo. So now we got a bunch of guys chasing us. Oh my god. Run away. And there's no uh, chaining, so there isn't, uh, we have like negative 80, 90 health. There isn't uh, chaining so that when one becomes aggroed, one beside it also becomes aggroed. But that would be very easy to implement, actually. But I'm not really concerned about that right now. Uh, so I'll show you how we can do that. Um, well, first off, if you go into the enemy header, you'll see that we have a boolean aggroed and it equals false. So this is going to be, um, so when the enemy is instantiated on the screen, it's created. Uh, it's not going to be aggravated at the beginning, but then if we go into our projectile hits the enemy, let's see. Must be down. Projectile collides with enemy. Then we just set this little aggro thing up here. Enemy array counter to aggro equals true. Because when we hit it, it becomes aggro. Now it's in the aggro state. And so we just set up this little algorithm. We used, um, we're going through the um, vector array of the enemy array. Um, if aggro equals true. And then we have this little um, time counter. Um, so if the elapse as seconds is greater than one, then we'll execute this code and it keeps looping and restarting when the enemy is aggroed. We're generating a random number and it's, um, so we have a 33.3 .3 repeating percent chance of either of these things happening. The first thing happening is that the enemy fires a projectile and also chases the player in its direction. Um, the next the next thing is that the enemy chases the player but it starts chasing it um, through the y direction and the next one is the enemy chases the player but it starts chasing through the x direction so every second it makes a new decision on one of these three cases and you could mess with the numbers uh, if you wanted certain things to happen more than others or you wanted different movement patterns and stuff like that so if uh, if one possibility uh, rand equals one we calculate the player being to the right of the enemy by going player one dot rack dot get position dot x is less than um, enemy array counter dot rack dot get position dot x so we are to the left of the enemy in this case because it's less than um, actually, no, that's player to the right for this one. Sorry. Uh, and also, uh, the absolute value of the player's Y position is less than the absolute value of the enemy um, Y position. And we take the absolute value of that to find the difference. And we say if that is less than 40, then we will be shooting a projectile in the X direction at the enemy. So you can just download the source code if this is too confusing. 
but uh, then we just play our little sound effect. We say that the um, projectile one is an enemy projectile, and that's actually something we just set up. So in our projectile header, we say pool enemy projectile equals false. And then when we're firing an enemy projectile, we set it equal to true. And afterwards, we're also going to cancel it so that when we're firing our regular shots, it doesn't think they're enemy projectiles. Um, we are uh, firing in direction 3 for the projectile, which should be to the left because the player is to the right. Um, we are then actually just placing the projectile where the enemy is, just like we did in a previous video, but for the player. Um, we're pushing back the projectile. It's headed in direction 3, so it's shooting out. I guess in your case, it would be going this way. Um, yeah, so, and then we set the enemy to start heading in direction 3 as well. And it's the same exact thing, but this time it was a greater than sign, and we're setting the direction to 4. So, um, players to the left, you're firing the projectile to the right. The enemy's firing that way. And it's the same thing for here. The player um, is above the enemy, and here the uh, player is below the enemy. So, these other cases are just um, straight up following the player. Um, it's, it's not uh, perfect because uh, it has to decide whether it wants to go up or to the side because it's not uh, exactly lined up with the player. So it kind of makes a pattern like this usually to get to the player and uh, compensates. And uh, so the enemies aren't also don't look so much like uh, robots, even though they, yeah, I guess they kind of do. Um, but yeah, you can tweak it and make this seem more realistic, I suppose. Um, so that's what happens here. And like I explained before, this one's for starting in the Y, this one's for starting in the X, so that the enemy doesn't always walk this way and then go up. It can also have a chance to go this way and then go this way, depending on where the player is. So that's how that works. And, uh, so we're, we shoot stuff at the player. And now I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, the projectile colliding with the player, the enemy projectile colliding with the player. So let's we'll go enemy projectile collides with player. There's the, that's the enemy array. We want the player. Ah, that's right. There is no player array. We just go like this. We go if if projectile array counter dot um, enemy projectile equals true. Then we have to do a um, detection, a collision detection. So if the projectile array counter dot rack dot get global bounds intersects and then it's intersecting the player one, then what we do is we go um, projectile no projectile array counter dot destroy equals true because we want to destroy the projectile. We also go player one dot HP minus equals the um, we could go uh, what did we do in the other one? Yeah, we just did uh, projectile array counter dot attack damage. And so we may need to actually set the attack damage when we're creating that projectile. So let's get rid of 
that code. So we're decreasing the player's HP and we are destroying the projectile. Yeah, that's, I think that should be good. We can always test it. There could be something else in conflicting with it. Um, so that is attack damage. How about we go projectile array, no, projectile one dot attack damage equals um, enemy array counter dot attack damage. And did we have sort of a text display too? Whoa, what the hell? Oh god, I changed the wrong thing up here. Hopefully I didn't just screw this up. That's the projectile and that's enemy array. No, I think I just mixed up the names. Uh, we'll find out anyways easy to change if I did. Enemy projectile collides with player. Okay, this is the text display. Control X, no not Control X. Um, okay, that's right. We want to set the position at player one. Guess there's a reason why no one has made SFML videos this in depth. Because <laughs> it would be like this. Okay. <laughs> Although, I mean, if you're following this, <laughs> Should be an adventure together, so whatever. You can both learn stuffs. Okay, text display rate not push back, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay, let's see if that worked. Hopefully. Gotta fix that starting sprite thing. Oh god. Oh, it looks like it worked. Okay, we got 8 HP, 6 HP, and we got the load display too. Let's attack. We could also give each of the unique enemies uh, specific attack damage because we only gave them specific HP. Jesus, we need more HP. Okay. So that works. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and uh, like this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.